I personally believe that Montauk was most likely a test bed for some of the technology interchange between the aliens and the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. That they were trying out a lot of these great ideas they got. They're also trying to replicate systems and technologies they had on the captured crash mm -hmm. UFOs. Also, I can remember I had an office in the radar tower. It was the first office on the second floor in the back. Mm -hmm. Next to my office was another office and I remember, I swear on a stack of Bibles, I remember a lizard man hmm. in that office. It was His Highness Draco something, I can't remember the other name. Hmm. And he was about six foot, seven foot tall, had sort of like scaly skin, humanoid, he walked erect like we do, he had hmm. two arms, two legs, he had a tail, but it really didn't show most of the time. Hmm. He had somewhat of a humanoid face, strange eyes, a big mouth, and, you know, looked like what you would expect if you're going to put together a lizard man. Mm -hmm. There was a being on Star Trek called, called the Gorn that Captain mm -hmm. uh, Kirk fought mm -hmm. on this planet. This man that I w worked next to sort of resembled that being. Mm -hmm. Now, how did that strike you? Did I mean? <laughs> I didn't that would have, that have to be to a traumatic experience. No, not you? I didn't have that much to do with it. Mm -hmm. I call it it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether it was he or she. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have that much to do with it. But you accepted his presence as something well, normal for... What else do you do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're working next to this thing. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, how are you, how are you, know, that sort <laughs> of thing. Am I going for coffee and dollars? Yeah. Yeah. He spoke in a hissy voice. You know, hissed a lot. Uh-huh and sort of sound like he was loud whispering most of the time. <laughs> and then the other thing that we ran across, I needed some sodium hydroxide for a special soldering project. Of course, we all know Drano is essentially sodium hydroxide. So I went to the commissary, got a can of Drano. So I took a glass, put some water in it, dissolved the Drano in it. I was using this as flux of solder wood. His Highness Draco comes in, <laughs> Oh, no. And he said, more! <laughs> so I got another glass of water, poured some more Draco on it, handed it to him. <laughs> and the, and the, the Draco was getting drunk on Draco. How the hell did I can stomach that stuff? I don't know. So finally, he really tied a rag on. That Tune thing, in at 11. Yeah, that thing, he really tied out a rag. He must have drank about eight glasses of water made of the heavy, thick Drano. Yeah, I put enough in so it was thick because I was using a solder paste. And he gulp. <laughs> and finally, he came, came back to normal sense. He asked me, how do you make that stuff? That's the greatest stuff you've ever had. So I told him, go get some Drano. And they had, they had to keep buying more and more Drano. Because the reptilians are getting drunk on the drain. <laughs> um, were they involved in the project then, directly? I think they were there more as advisors. Mm -hmm. This is why I think they were there as advisors. Were they there of their free will? <laughs> it seemed to be. Yeah. Because they were treated well by the station management. Mm -hmm. and it was almost like, Your Highness, how are you? They were kowtowing.